Let's talk about stocks. They are seesawing today after the Nasdaq hit an intraday high or intraday record earlier this afternoon. Now, this coming after the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq also hit closing records yesterday. Now, earnings so far this season coming in at 6.3 percent ahead of expectations. They have been a big driver of the markets over the last couple of weeks. Joining us now is David Bonson, CIO of the Bonson Group and author of The Case of Dividend Growth. David, thanks for joining me today. Just let me get your thoughts on earnings to kick it off. So far, we've heard from a lot of the financial names, a lot of consumer staple names. Inez was just talking about the fact that we will get some more from the tech giants, Facebook out after the, uh, this afternoon. What are your thoughts so far? Uh, it's definitely been a better earnings season than expected, both top line and bottom line, but far more importantly is forward guidance. Mm-hmm. The full year guidance had been so beaten up in the first quarter and overdone in that regard that now on a full year basis, uh, the market is more and more pricing in this idea of uh, earnings recession is, off, is more and more going off the table. So when we look ahead, when we uh, just see the overall for this earnings season so far, obviously it has been a big driver for the markets. We just talked about the fact that the Nasdaq hit a new intraday high today. In terms of what will continue this momentum forward, when we talk about the S&P potentially hitting 3,000, what will get us there? There's no question in my mind that what will sustain the rally comes down to business confidence, business investment, in, and that will manifest itself in capital expenditures. Mm-hmm. It was on fire through the first part of the Trump administration. Late 2017, early 2018, we saw CapEx skyrocket far off of any level it had been in a decade. That slowed down and came to a halt at the end of last year, I think primarily because of the trade war and also because of concerns about credit markets tightening in in lieu of Fed uh, uh, monetary tightening. Now, to the extent that you can get additional business investment in the U.S. economy, which I'm very confident we will, I think that the rally will have a couple more innings to go. That will be the catalyst to higher stock prices. So you think we have a few more innings left in this rally, then it sounds like. doesn't look like the bull market's over quite just yet. No, I don't think it is, and nor is the euphoria indicating such. In other words, we have this great rally, hit new high yesterday on the S&P, No one's acting like it. The flows are not showing it. Money coming into the market is not showing it. Bond funds continue to receive more dollars than equities, both in ETFs and mutual funds. So generally speaking, as a contrarian, I think you're going to get a real blow off top when a bull market's ready to end. This has been the most doubted bull market in history. Interesting stuff there, David. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on just the Fed's next move. So we heard we saw the dovish pivot that the Fed made at the end of March, just in terms of the fact that they're saying that they maybe won't rate hikes or raise rates again for 2019. Now there's talk of a possible rate cut. But when you take a look at the markets where we have stocks near all time highs, take a look at the economy and it actually looks pretty strong. So that makes the case for the fact that it would be more likely for us to get a rate hike than a rate cut. Well, this is the entire pickle, right? This is what happens when you put $4 trillion on your balance sheet in an emergency measure post-financial crisis, is all of a sudden getting off of it is not quite as easy as some would have hoped. The person who really predicted this, by the way, was Jay Powell in 2013. He was not Fed chair, but he was the Fed governor and said, how are we going to unwind this in the future? He found out Q4 of last year when credit markets revolted. So now they're in a position where it seems somewhat irrational to have an economy accommodative, easy policy that would be more in line with an economic emergency, not an economic boom. So, But on the other hand, they have so much leveraging up that took place in credit markets that they don't have much of a choice. They will put the economy into recession if they were to go forward with additional tightening. That's what the yield curve flattening told them. So I think that they're reasonably stuck. I don't expect to see a cut this year. I don't think the cut would be efficacious if they did it, but I don't think they're going to be raising anytime soon. Possibly not through all 2020 either. So David, where should investors put their money in this market? Where are you finding opportunity? Oh, I think there's a lot of opportunity in the dividend growth space. And it's not just because you mentioned I wrote a book on the subject. Mm-hmm. It's what we've done for 20 years and I intend to do for 20 more. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that there's a lot of very expensive stuff in the market. Overall, market valuations are somewhat full, not really that stretched. A lot of the tech stuff is stretched. We wouldn't touch FANG with a 10-foot 
people. Well, that's interesting. Any of the Fang names? None of them, no. And, and that's not because we don't think they can go higher. It's just we think that what makes them go higher is more people willing to buy it. Mm -hmm. Certainly, it can't go higher for any other reason than its valuation is just going to get even more and more stretched. Mm -hmm. And the volatility embedded in the names we saw in Q4, if the whole market's going to drop 10%, 15%, that is what it is. It happens in markets all the time. But we prefer our names go down 10 8 7%, not 40%, which is what the Fang Basket and NVIDIA did in the fourth quarter last year. Do you expect that volatility, you mentioned it quickly, the volatility that we saw in the fourth quarter to return to the markets at some point in 2019? In 2019, it is entirely possible that it doesn't return mm -hmm. to that magnitude. It certainly won't stay in this easy river we've had for the last four months and that we had for all of calendar year 2017. Mm -hmm. But I think that you will get some more normalized volatility later in the year. But the fourth quarter was a real kind of uh, perfect storm of circumstances around the Fed announcing not just we've done the tightening we've done, but we think there could be four more rate hikes. Mm -hmm. So that uh, walking that back has probably taken off the severe levels of volatility. But, of course, there's geopolitical things that could change that and so forth. So you never, in our business, ever predicted that volatility can't come back. <laughs> but I think that more than likely, from a macroeconomic standpoint, uh, you're going to have a more normalized volatility. There will be headline events here and there. But earnings are going to be good, and earnings drive markets, always and forever. There we go. David Bonson, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you.